Welcome to the Christian Center Church Podcast. If you'd like to sow into this ministry, you can do so at the link below. Thank you for joining us, and we hope the message today will bless you. This evening, I want to minister just a little while on the power of because. Now, I remember when I was a kid, and how many of you young people know what I'm talking about? How many of y'all were raised with because, and it was an empty reason? It was, I said, you said, you said uh, why can't we go? Because. I tell you, he said, I said, why can't we get one of those? He said, because. <laughs> you know, it was an empty thing. It was, it was just empty, and, and they really didn't have any uh, uh, excuse. Well, they didn't give it to me. They may have gave them to y'all. They may have gave you the ABC as why the because was there, but they didn't give me the ABC why the because was there. They just didn't give that to me. Amen. But, you know, it was just empty. And it didn't have a why. You know, the answer was empty without reason. But the word of God has reason with the because. You know, sometimes we, we, we uh, go after the same way that we heard it and we think it means the same thing throughout Scripture or whatever we're getting hold of. But it doesn't always mean. By, by no means does it uh, uh, really mean that. Now, the word in the, in the, in the uh, Hebrew... The word actually is a conjunction or an action verb, and, and, and y'all with English probably know more than me, but it's words like as for so much. It's words as is assured. It's words that mean certainly. It means doubtless. I fool, I fool with a lot of people, and I fool with a lot of becauses, but they never meant doubtless. They, they never meant uh, assured. They never meant anything positive. That, that's pretty much I'm not going to get it because. Amen. Why they do that? Because. But doubtless, rightly, surely, truly, that is what it means, you know. Whenever we get to the power of, of because, it'll change your life. You know, the psalmist said in 113.6, he said, I will sing unto the Lord. Psalms 13.6, he said, I will sing unto the Lord for he has dealt with me bountifully. He said, you know what he said? Because God has, and he's talking about ripened, he's talking about yield. He said, I'm going to do praise. I'm going to speak to God because what he's doing. You know, some people won't worship the Lord, won't, won't speak about the Lord because of what the enemy's doing. They're stuck in the old because, amen. But the psalmist is saying here, because he had dealt with me, this, this wonderful, it, it's sure, it's, it's legit, it's truly. Let me tell you, God has dealt wonderfully with us. And lots of times people haven't got their way, and then because they hadn't got their way, we fail to see what all God truly has done. You see, people get stuck in stuff. Their head gets stuck. Their brain gets stuck. They, they, they talk about stuff that, 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 that they can't do anything about. And am I guilty? Yeah, I have. But I learned to turn loose of some of those things. Can you say amen? And we have to get to that place that we'll sing unto the Lord because he's dealt bound. Not because people did you good. Not because it's a pretty day. Not because you feel well. Not because you, you got all your ducks in a row. Amen. Let me tell you, I've seen times about ducks in a row. I've seen times I didn't even know where my ducks were. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? Who's got the ducks? You know, But bamfully, it means the reward, the yield, what it is. He said, I'll sing it to the Lord because he's bringing the yield to our life. You know, and if he's bringing the yield, he ought, to bring, he ought to receive something now to yield. He ought to receive some praise. He said, I'm going to sing. Now, I know some of y'all don't think I do that very well, but that's all right. <laughs> I make a joyful noise. I'm probably the most scriptural person in the room, I make a joyful noise, amen. And you other two know who you are, amen. <laughs> the psalmist said in 28, 6, he said, Bless the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication. You know, he's heard my earnest prayer. He said, I'm going to bless the Lord. You know, not because not he gave me anything. Come on, not like that. You know, some people, they, and he's talking about what God has heard. You know, you can't get what you're after if God doesn't hear you. He said, he's hearing me. Let me tell you, if you're praying right, he will hear you. Come on. You know, some people think they ought to have anything. I think you ought to have whatever you want. But, but the thing is, I think we should be thankful. It's God that brings it, not ourselves, not our own strength, not anything. You know, if somebody cut your air off, you'd be in trouble. <laughs> you need a little air. Psalms 33 and 21 says, For our hearts shall rejoice in him because he has, because, excuse me, because we have trusted in his holy name. You know, you can rejoice because you trust in him. You trust in his name. And what is it? I, I was sharing with Brother Michael. was sharing one day. And it talked about the man, the, the, the spirit, the, the angel, the, the man that was going forth. He said, I'll put my name in him. Everything that he is, a representation of who he is. 
See, when God's moved, God does things right. Can you say amen? When he sent Jesus to die for you, he sent him to die for a reason. But he said that, you, that we'll bless him because of what God's doing. What we really want to do is be blessed by God, not bless God. Can you say amen? It was a big thing in my life when I found out that me, a little guy like me, a human small, just a frail person I am, I could bless God. I could bless the Father. I could bless him. And then after a while, you know, it really began to seek in. And I said, what else could I give him except that which he requires? Our, our, our thankfulness to be blessed, to bless him. Because you've heard his voice. You know that, that God hears what you're saying? That's a blessing to know that God hears our prayers. Psalm 33, 21 says, our hearts shall rejoice because we have trusted in his holy name. You know why some people can't rejoice? Because they have not trusted in his name. He said, I trust in his name. It does. A lot of people, I don't trust that. They're going to do it. I remember one of the first times that, that I felt like maybe I couldn't get it done. Then I finally had to get past not thinking I could get it done to understand only God can get it done. I was going to pray for a woman. I thought she was having a heart attack. I thought it was bad. I, it was bad enough for me. You know, it's a, she, they brought her forward, and, and, and I prayed. And, I, man, I, I sounded spiritual as I could. I prayed as earnest and spiritually as I could. And I about closed up and about had an amen. And I thought everything's going to be okay. And I looked back there and her husband was standing holding her purse at the door. And I looked at my wife and one of the girls. I said, what are they doing? She said, they're going to take her to the doctor just in case. <laughs> Nothing wrong with going to the doctor, but go ahead and go. I mean, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and go. Don't come down here and just give God a shot. My heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. We're going to rejoice because we trust him. Do you trust him? Are you going to go into next year trusting the Lord? You trust it in your own strength, your own ability, what you do? You know, you, you got to turn your kids over, your life over. You got to turn things over to God. Amen. And let me tell you the best time to turn your kids, your wife, your husband, your family, your, your finances, anything. Let me tell you what the best time to turn them over now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Amen. But trust means to have confidence and be sure. He said in, in Psalms 30, 21, and said, Our hearts shall rejoice because we are trusted in the Lord. This means we have confidence in him that we sure. We, that, you know what they were doing while she was, he was standing at the door? They just giving God a shot. Don't give God a shot. He don't need your shot. He needs you to walk in faith. He needs you to believe the word. He needs you, you need to take over what he has. You know, some people think you're mean whenever you tell them God's not going to do anything else. He's already got it done. He's already through. He said it's finished. But you got to trust in you. Can you imagine that, that I can? You know, the psalmist said in uh, 3740, he said, and the Lord shall help them, of glory, and the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked one and save them. Why? Because they trust in him. Now, you know, stuff to do with the wicked, stuff to be in the need to be delivered and understanding that you can be saved, that you can be delivered and set free. He said, it's because they trusted in him. You know, uh, I had a broke chair one time. The fold-up chair, and I don't know what somebody did to it. Must have took it, I don't know, to the WWE, I don't know, or WWF, whatever, and tore the chair up. It's a bad chair. So I had this sister. She's a pretty good-sized sister. I said, look, sister, I'm going to put two chairs behind you, and I want you to just sit down and not look back. I want you to trust me. Now, who knows that Pastor Jerry's not going to put this 250-pound woman in a broke chair. I'm just not going to do it. I'm just not going to do it. We're liable at church. We just ain't going to do it. So I put the chair down there, and she... <laughs> You know, sometimes we look back before we sit down. We look back and feel. We know it's a choice of success or failure or it's a broke chair and a, and a chair we know to hold us up. But do you trust the one to set the chair out for you? I've never done anything. Any, no, I guess me. I guess I would be suspicious. But it, sometimes I might be a little suspicious. But, but I, I, done, I hadn't done anything to, you know, break her trust, you know, or do anything or, or hurt anybody. But when she got ready to go, she was hunting that chair. But no, because they trust in him, that God's doing something, delivering them. He, he's setting them free from the wicked. He saves us because we trust him. So you know what that means? You don't have to fight the wicked on your own. You don't have to come up with that stuff on your own. Just trust him for it, and you'll be ahead. Can you say that? I had, I had to work on me. I had to get me to that place to understand that, that God is saying something certainly 
without doubt, regardless of what it is. He said, God's it. And, it. and it joins us to what? This because in the Greek joins us to what God has said. It joins us to it. The because that I was raised up with means you ain't getting it just because. You can't have one because. You ain't going because. I got to be a grown man when I was 16 years old, and the becauses got left in my life, got less in my life. <laughs> then the world tried to put them on me. Ain't. The psalmist said in 59, 9, he said, because of thy strength, I will wait upon God. He is my defense. He said, because God is. You know, you can defend yourself all you want. You can talk it up. But because who God is, let him defend you. You ain't got to talk up for yourself. You don't have to defend. When did you see Jesus defending himself? When did you ever see Jesus taking up for himself? You know, the biggest thing I've seen Jesus do, I mean, were pretty great things. He, he ran them out of the temple twice, not once, but twice. At the beginning of his ministry and the end of his ministry, he ran them out. And he looked, at the, he looked at the Pharisees and told them, he said, you're a bunch of serpents and snakes. He said, you won't lend a finger. He won't lift a finger to show them the way of the kingdom. He said, but you'll block them out for so-and-so. He went on and told them. He said, he said you'll tithe on a mint, a little mint in your window. You know, little, 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 got a little peppermint in your window? They just cut it and take it, to the, take it to the temple and tithe on He said, but we can't get you to do the things of God. He told them, you're spiritual. He said, but you're carnal spiritual. Think that with that physical thing. Because that is, you know, because who God is, that should be our strength. Not because we have it figured out, not because we have the ability. It's because God has already worked out people. You know how many people God has touched and lived in since he's been fooling with man? Now, I take that same thing and I work it with the devil. And the devil will use that because on you. Because they don't treat you right. Because they don't lose you right. Because, y'all listening? <laughs> You know, but, but the psalmist said, he delivered me from the wicked one and saved us because they trust in him. Do you trust him? Now, it's not hard to trust God for a meal when you got one. It's not hard to trust God for a healing if you heal. Mm -mm. It's not hard to trust God for peace if you already got But it's in those other times that the wicked is around. He's not trying to, he said, just trust I mean, you know, if we trust him like we trust a lot of things, can you say amen? Psalm 59 and 9 said, because of his strength. Now, let me tell you what. If you're working in your own strength, you'll fail. But if you work in the strength of God, you'll always succeed. You'll always have great things happen in your life and around you. Amen. You know what the believer ought to really be doing? Leaving signs and wonders. This ought to be, ought the things be going on and you don't have to stand back. You don't have to stand back and confirm them and get a pat on the back that it happened. We should do them and they should just be the flow of where we go. Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And I should dwell in the house of the Lord. He said that this followed me. It's part of who I am. And when we get to that place, we trust to God. And because what he said, because of what he's done, because his ability, not my own, but, you know, he says in, one, he says in 59, 9, because he is my strength. Because he is my strength and I'll wait upon him and God is my defense. The word strength here means to be a, a boldness. Actually means to be might and have power. Defense means he's a high tower. He's a refuge. So this is what God, because he's my refuge. He's my defense. But he'll never be your defense if he's not your refuge. How does that make so? You can't get into defense if you're outside the refuge. You can't get in. you got to come in. Trust him and believe him. Say, yeah, Lord, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Psalm 63, 3 says, because of thy love and kindness, it's better than life, and my lips shall praise. He said, because of your kindness, I'm just going to praise you because he didn't, just his kindness, it didn't say he was working miracles, didn't say that he was uh, making your book fat, your pocketbook fat, and any of those things. He said, because of his love and kindness. Because of his love and kindness, that, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go, my lips shall going to praise him. I'm going to make noises. I'm going to say something about who he is. Now, which is better, you know? But, you know, for some people, they'll so because they didn't get there. That totally does mean. The way I'm talking about when God says this for sure, it, it's, it's that it's doubtless. It's rightly when he says it. You can say, rightly thy love and kindness. Doubtless thy love and kindness. You talk about because. You know, God, whenever he came to us and, and, and his son Jesus, he came to the way to bring us all the way, not part of the way. You know, some people start in the way, but they don't stay the way. Can you say amen? Joel Osteen said that Jesus was a way. Now, Jesus is the way. 
He is the only way. There, it, 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 all, Jesus said, he said, all that come before me were liars. And thieves said, they, cl- they climbed over in. They climbed over in the place where the, where the sheep were defenseless. That they climbed in. He said, they came, they knew he's the, he's the good shepherd. How many of y'all believe that? Amen. And if he's the good shepherd, he's do he's do our love and kindness. He's do our, the strength that, that we muster to praise him and give to him. You know, you, a lot of people do a lot of complaining when they ought to be doing some praising. So if you stop and pray instead of stray, you, you won't get near as much trouble. Can you say amen? <laughs> uh, Brother Strother, Brother Cotton was a friend of mine. And he, he believed that people had changed. And he would tell me how he was affected by older men and affected by things. He's an old man by now, so it's an old game. He, he knows all about it. And he talked about him when he was putting up a fence and nailing down some barbed wire. And if you ever nail, nail staples, and especially a hardwood like a pine knot or something, it'll glance off. You can't hardly get it going. You can't get it You'll hit your finger. It'll glance off and do that. So he's working on it, and one of them men, one of them grown men come up behind him and told him, said, cuss it. said, it'll go in there. I said, what'd you do, Brother Cotton? He said, I cussed it. I said, what did it do, Brother? He said, it went in every time. <laughs> because it went in because he cussed it. But it's amazing what people think works and what doesn't work. I had a man tell me we was in council. Which, well, I was the counselee. I wasn't counseled. I was counseling. And I told him, I said, well, first thing you got, you got to straighten. I said, you guys got to really commit to each other and, and take this trip with the Lord. I said, and, and just get committed spiritually, physically, mentally, and financially. He said, oh, he said, I tried them finances. He said, it don't work. I just closed the books. I said, well, son, I don't have any more answers for you. I said, all my answers lie in the book. I said, I don't, I said, if that's not working and that don't work, it's no use for me to tell you about the other stuff. His little wife could have got under the table, but you know what I did? I stopped. Some people would carry on and try and go through that foolishness, but I'm not. If you're not going to trust him, it's no use for us to tell you about it. It's in your court. you got to trust. You have to make a, a choice. To where it's trust him, where to praise him, where to do it. because God's done, because of God, because of his, rightly as his. Not because you're going to get anything. Psalm 63 and 3, he said, Thy loving kindness is better than life. You know what that word actually means? Beauty. It means favor. One word we could use that we would understand. Because of thy loving kindness or because of thy great favor. See, that's what we are. Quit trying to play with our favor. Now, there's times I say, God, I ask you a favor with God and man. Sometimes it's only men can move for you, not God, but God's going to use the man, and you need a particular man, and I've learned to ask favor with that man because of God. Amen. You said, I got it with you, I must got it with him. You said, you give me favor with God, amen. amen. Come on. But why? Because of who he is, not because of what I do, not because of my greatness, but because of the greatness of the Father. Can somebody say amen? amen. You know, 167, excuse me, no, not with never take that back. I won't do that. You know, the very ministry of Jesus was built on a because. But it's in the Greek. It's a little different word, but it's, it's a little different from the Hebrew word. But, but, but it's very much like it. It means to have reason. It means by cause. You can imagine that, that God had a cause when he come for us. He wasn't just seeing what he could get done. He wasn't just rolling dice. Because Luke 4 and 18 is where I want to be. Luke and 4 18 says this, that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me with Jesus. And Jesus, you, that, that reason, he said the cause by the reason. He said the reason. He said the Spirit of the Lord is behind me by reason. That he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the Catholic. The recovering of the side of the blind. And set at liberty them that believe, them that, that are bruised. Excuse me. Jesus was able and he was still yet able. He said because. Some people say well I don't know this. Or I'm not worthy of that. Or that. It's because it's upon him. He, he is. He's carrying us. You know I've heard people well, you know, you just don't. Yeah, but you can know. 
But you can know. You can know who, where you are. You can know that God's on your side. You can know that you have favor. It's amazing that, that, that people find out all the wrong things. But Jesus is basically saying, I'm here with the because. That's what he's done to me. He, he set by reason for me to come. How many of y'all know he wants to set the captive free, the prisoners free? Yeah. He'll set you free from your own, your own self, my own self, the flesh, what we want and how we do it. You know, oftentimes we, we, we can just about tell God how we want it. We can just about tell him. <laughs> we can just about tell him how we want it, the way we want it, what it looks like when we're after it and all that kind of stuff. We, we, we can tell him. But when it comes to us, we don't have that checkbox list. We don't have that little list to look it down and go, check. Yeah, I do that, do that, do that, that. We'll find reasons why not to do that. Well, I'm going on back up here. I didn't know I was just going to be fast and quick with you tonight. Hey, Amen. Hold on. I'll be back. Let's get us something else. <laughs> You know, you know, as Jesus worked to, and his ministry was based upon the word, and, and but in Matthew's, let's go, turn to Matthew's real quick, Matthew's 13. And you know that <laughs> when Jesus was working and moving, the same way he was dealing with people then is the same way he deals with people now. People think like that was a special thing back there or something. It wasn't. It was just a people thing. The way God did things then, he's still doing things. He's amen. Does he, can he do things differently? Most certainly can he do things differently. You know, he, can, he, he can use you at Walmart instead of at the temple, can you say, man? He, he can use you at Walmart instead of at, 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 the, at, at the marketplace and with the goats and the sheep, so can you say, man? Isn't that good? Matthew 13, 54. And when he come into his own city, he taught them in the synagogue as much that they were astonished and said, for thence to this man have this wisdom and do these mighty works. Is this not the carpenter's son? Is it not the mother called, his mother called Mary and his brother James and Joaz, uh, Simon and Judas and his sister? Are they not with us all? Things are this, men, all these things. Now, you know, you say he's just the regular guy. You know why some people really don't go anywhere? Because, because they look at it as just a normal thing. It's not real. It's not that much to it. Y'all just know. Look, if this stuff ain't real, you need to get something that is real. <laughs> And he told me, he said that they were astonished at what he said. They just couldn't get it, couldn't get really how he does all these mighty works. He said, hey, isn't he just a regular guy? Let me tell you, a regular guy named Jesus still gets stuff done. Can you say amen? He's still doing stuff when people just really can't understand who he is. Their familiarity with him was thinking that they hurled him down, and it was because of them, not him. Amen. All these things. And they were offended of him, in him. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and his own house. And he did not, he did not many works because of their unbelief. Because, by reason, in the case of. He didn't say he didn't want to. He said he couldn't because. By the reason. Of the people what they thought. You know, that's the same thing that you can get something going on and moving in here. You know, you, you can't look, it's just us. No, we need to look that it's the power of God moving in here. I don't care if he wants to use a chicken or use somebody else in here. It don't bother me. Can you say amen? If they send a chicken down here and he preached the gospel, we'll listen to him. Amen. As long as he stays right, we'll listen to him. <laughs> you know what he said? Just couldn't do it because. He said that, that he said that, that can you wrap your mind around that an almighty God can't do it because of you and me and because of them, because of what we think, because we think it's normal, because because nothing we think could eat. Well, is there any good thing? Remember when they were drumming up the team? He said, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? That's a bad shanty town down there. Can anything good? He said, We found the Messiah. He said, Can anything good come? You know, a lot of people can't move because, because of who people are or whatever. They look around and don't look. You know what he said? It's the way people see things. It's the because of people that are stifle God and keep God from moving because of us, because of me. You know what we do? Immediately, immediately, people blame people and things and the devil and everything else, and very few people take responsibility of what they're believing or the situation where they are. I had a school teacher one time. I guess y'all had one too. 
I had a school teacher one time, and she'd stay, on, she'd stay at recess and try to get me to understand math. And, and I love math. I had dyslexia. Nobody knew I had dyslexia, not even me. And I struggled with it. And, but I wanted to, and she wanted to see me succeed, and she would take me her, like her, her recess, and, and she was burning my recesses up too. But anyway, but <laughs> she would take her recess, and, she would, and she'd say, Gerald, you see, that's my school name my whipping name, and people I owe money, if they call me, Gerald. Yeah, and they say, Gerald, go to my office. That's my whipping name. I told you about that. She said, Gerald, she said, I wish I could just pour this in your ear, but you're going to have to try to understand it. See, when you're flipping numbers around, they're doing something else. I'm getting my numbers straight. What would you say? <laughs> they go to part two, and I'm just getting my numbers straight. Let me go back and get my numbers straight. It was fun, <laughs> but not for me. <laughs> but, you know, she, she, she told me that I'd have to put the effort in. You, and if you want to see God, well, you've got to put the effort in. I, everybody in here is behind the eight ball in some kind of way. Everybody's not, not, not where everybody is. And, and just know this. Some of us and some of y'all are ahead of a lot of people. And but you look at what's wrong, you get the because you can't but this, and you, you come on, that's not true. Can you see me? You know, the power of Jesus' ministry was the because was he's anointing me. He said, He said the same word that he used that the anointing, because the anointing is here, by reason is on me, the same reason I can't do because they won't. You know, these people say, Well, you know, God do what he wants to. Let me let me inform you that God probably gets his way less than anybody you know. It's a billion people out there who just ask, just want them to love each other, just whatever. I don't think he got his way on that this morning. Come on. It's amazing. It's amazing to me how good, is, how good God is to us. And people try to earn what he is. No, you trust him. He said, I do it because I trust the Lord. And you know, the psalmist, we read one a while ago. He didn't say, I trust him because he's going to do it the way I want. He didn't trust the way he says it's going to turn. He said, I trust him. It works out because you, you know, it'll work out the correct way if we really are willing for God to work in our lives, no matter if it's the way we want it or not. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. You know that, but the power of the blood, how many of y'all know that, that, that it cleanses us from all unrighteousness? He's working ahead. He's got some things. You know that, that even in demonic attack, is that you got to get on your game. you got to see it for what it is. You know, sometimes you're not dealing with people. You're dealing with devils. You're dealing with demons, you know. Paul dealt with them. Jesus dealt with them. And sometimes the, when you get to that place, you got to understand that God's still moving even when you can't see him moving. And you got to take again the responsibility. Let me, let's go real quick over to Matthew 17, real quick. Matthew 17, about the 15th verse. About the 15th verse. And this man, you know the story that he brings the son that, that's attacked by the enemy. And he comes to Jesus. And he's looking for help. And in the 15th verse, he said, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic, sorely vexed. And oftentimes he falleth into the fire and oftentimes in the water. You know what he's saying now? All along that, that his son said the devil's trying to burn him or drown him. He's, try, he's trying to do something to him. He, it's something happening to him. Let me tell you, it's a, it's a drug world on fire out there. That, that, there's a water drowning people called social media today. Do you know that kids are killing themselves over what somebody printed on their page? Or text or papped or put or said, however you want to say it, on there because the enemy's out to attack. You know that when Jesus came, they were trying to kill babies. You know that? They're after our next generation. There's very little between us. Well, a lot of us is old school, and when it's gone, it's done. If we don't raise them and bring them, there won't be a next generation to know what we know and who we know and how we know in our belief system at home. They just won't. And he said he had problems. 16th verse, he said, I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why can't we cast him out? Now, that was a good word. That was a good question. Very few smart things you see the disciples do in the early days. 
But they found out they couldn't help them. They need to find out why they couldn't help them because they believed that they could. And there must be proof that, that, that there must be a witness that they already helped people. Say, so why we couldn't get him? Why we couldn't do it? Excuse me. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. And you know what he's telling them? He said, because, he said, by reason. The reason is you. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, be removed thence to yonder place, and it shall, it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Now, what, now if you are uh, in unbelief, if you can't get it done because you can't believe, don't worry about this verse, but what he says is it shall be impossible unto you. Nothing, he says. You know, I can understand because is the faith that moves mountains. That little because. I'm going to believe him. I'm going to be assured that it's God said it. How are y'all going to live the victory? Because assuredly, now we're going to use it in the Greek. Assuredly, God's saying. Assuredly, God's got plans for me. Surely, it's God's plan I'm on. You know, that's one reason a lot of things don't work out because we're not on God's plan. I'm going to go over here, and Brother Doug, you with me over here? Smile at me big, brother. There you go, because the crowd quit. But you know, it's truth. It's truth. And we hold on, these, and he asked them, and, and they want to do it, and they, and they have some success. And we know that they did because the disciples came to him, and back to him, and he told them, he said, even demons are subject to it. You know what Jesus said? He said, you better be glad that your name's written down in the book of life. Now, he didn't, wasn't cutting against the casting out the demons and bringing deliverance because he's instructing them that they should do. But he said, even greater than that, he's trying to point them to the, he's trying to point them to the life of the Messiah. He's trying to, he said, but that's what you ought to be. You see, sometimes even men uh, think that they're doing something, casting out demons and going through them. You know, I, I've seen them. I've, I've seen them cut up. I, I've seen them slither on the floor. Let this little old girl th- uh, take two men and throw them away like that sitting in a chair. I say some stuff, amen. You know, and, and what we ought to have is respect for the Holy Spirit before you go out and tackle demons or anything. Don't go out and trying to get against the enemy if you're not believing the power of the true and living God. Don't get out. Don't get yourself in trouble. You know, you just be a little bit further. He said, Paul, we know. <laughs> Jesus, we know. He said, but who are you? Stripped them naked and put the knife to them, amen. What's going on, son? What's going on? Amen. You know, you know the, 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 remember the, the, the because factor in Luke 18, 4 and 5? Luke 18, 4 and 5? And you had the unjust, the widow and the unjust judge. Now, it's by reason. You know, lots of times Christians pray, and if they don't get their way, they, they just give up. Now, I'm going to ask you, tell you this now. It might be news to you. But I have had to pray about something a couple of times. <laughs> but you know, I probably had to. And I would feel bad about that if I didn't see Jesus do it. He had to pray for this cat, couldn't get him done. He had to take him away from people, get him aside from the village, and he prayed for him. He prayed, laid hand on me, so what you see? He said, I see men walking his trees. Well, he could see the, he could see the most likely firewood on their back. Most, it was something that, that he could see. And, you know, Jesus kept him out of town until he could, could see. You know, sometimes you've got to get away from your, that environment you built and get to where Jesus is and let Jesus make the call. Amen. Seeing the woman that, that, that went to the judge, she went time after time. And there's nothing tells us that she had a great case, but she had great faith. She, had, she knew what belonged to her or what she thought belonged to her in Luke 18 and 4 and 5. He said, and he would not for a while, but the unjust judge, he wouldn't give her what you. Let me tell you, just because you're not getting what you want right now, hang in there. Hold on. You'll see them get saved. You'll see, you'll see things happen. You'll see that, but you have to hold the course. Can you say amen? He said, and he wouldn't for a while. He wouldn't give the, the woman her deal for a while. He said, but afterwards he said within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard men, yet because. This widow troubles me. Trouble me. He said, I will avenge her, lest her continually come, and she weary me. That actually means a black eye. Same word as black eye. He said, he said I'm going to give it to her because she's staying with it. 
I'm going to get... You know, when's the last time that, that you held on another day and got what you wanted? Amen. See, some people just give up. They just give up. Say, no, nah, you brother Jesus, really no use to you. Yeah, it is a use. Can you say amen? He couldn't do it. Why? Because of their unbelief. Jesus couldn't work in the place. Why? Because of their unbelief. Jesus could work in the earth. Why? Because he, was, he had reason. He was sanctioned by God to be here. But sometimes we, we, we want to take that away from him. Can you say amen? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, you remember the, 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 the talents that Jesus gave the talents. And he gave the talents and he gave this man, he gave this man, he gave this man. And one came back and said, Lord, look, the, the talent has, has, has gained ten. Jesus said in the story, he says, because. You have been faithful a little. I, I, I'll make you over much, see, it's over much. Then had the other guy got the same thing, same opportunity, the same thing. And when he got there, he, he came and the Lord required of it. He said, uh, I took what was yours and I wrapped it in a rag. Actually, just a sweat rag. If you really look it up, the, the, is that the one he should be working and and drying off his forehead he wrapped it in and he buried it and he said why he said because you're a hard man because you're a hard man by reason that you're a hard man you pick up where you never laid down and this teller of the story of Jesus being he said well you knew I was a hard man when I give it to you you know that I get what ain't mine already. Well, he's just agreeing with him because it's his belief system. That's what he's saying. That, that what he's saying. He, he said, and now, but he takes what's his and gives it to him that has the most. Because, he said, because you a hard man. Because you take what's not yours. That's what he told you. The because. Some people don't do for God because, because they tried it. So you're going in up, you're not going in the assured way. You're going in that way when you was five, six, seven, and maybe last week your wife said, because, we ain't going because. I don't know. <laughs> but it's usually I tell my wife, she said, I won't go to work, Mark. I said, no. Nah. She said, why? I said, because. No, she, I just load up and take her to Walmart. Amen. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Come on, help me this night. Come, uh, word teach you, help me. Don't y'all stand with me? And know that so much is behind the power of because. Because he chose to. You know, it, it's because God wanted to send his son. Not because people are good. Not, not be, because they, that, that, they, they sought him. The Bible says that they did not come by the will of men, nor the will of the flesh, but by the spirit. That's how they come. That's how God's working. It's by his word and who he is. And when you get to that place, you wonder what you're going to do. Well, you're going to hold on because, amen. You're going to see it through because. You're going to know that, that God, we, we sing because of who he is. What We look to him because of what he is. And if we're not allowed to have a refuge church in these last days, we're going to be in trouble. We're living in some of the best times right now. I know some people don't want to hear it, but we're living in some of the best days right now. Come on. Who knows what tomorrow holds? But I tell you what really is the key. It's that hand that you hold, that nail-scarred hand that you hold. And it's because he gave his life for me. It's because he gave himself for us. That we should go into the next year and say, Lord, I, I'm going to, not because I got my way, but because you have in yours. And let us get to that place. Father, we just come to you in Jesus' name that we'll learn, Father God, to be in the correct attitude and the correct place, Lord. And we thank you, Father God, that the because has always been in place, Lord God. Because you chose us, Lord. Because you sent your son. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. And I'll choose to rejoice and be glad. We thank you, Father God, that we'll just get to that place and be assured and see what you've done yesterday, Lord. That we'll know what you're doing today. We just love you, Father. We appreciate you. And we thank you this very evening, Father, to take us into the next year, just great and good things, Lord God. Use us for your glory, Father God. Let us witness about you, Lord. Let us be able, Father God, to tell the story, Father God, and see a manifestation of the true and living God. We thank you this night, Father God. We thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name, we